and welcome to the second lecture of zoology for uh, vet's first year. Filum sarcoma stegophora. The film sarcoma stegophora belongs to the protista or protocista kingdom and it includes many unicellular or single celled organisms which could be uh, colonial also autotrophic or heterotrophic organisms. It is characterized by flagelle, pseudopodia or bot. Subfilum flagellata or flagellates. A flagellat is a cell or organism with one or more whip-like organelles. So flagellum in Latin means whip. So they have whip-like organelles. Organelles are part of the cell. These are the so-called organs of the cells. Like us, uh, multi-celled organisms, we have organs. The, the, the cell has organelles which function like organs. Eukaryotic flagella are supported by microtubules in a characteristic arrangement with nine fused pairs surrounding two central cilics. These arise from a basal body. So here on the screen you can see that the flagellum has a plasma membrane and a circle of outer microtubule dowlet. They have some proteins which are connecting the tubules and acting like muscles. There are in central microtubules. So there are in some radial spokes. All this system is connected and it's moving. Characteristic for the flagellum is that it can move two uh, types. It can move side to side and it can rotate. So it is very specific for the movement of the uh, organisms from the subfilum flagellum. There is one order called Euglenida, which is uh, very familiar with the genus Euglena. Euglena sp means species, different species from this uh, genus. So here you can see that the Euglenas has a very long flagellum uh, with which they can swim. Again, it can move side to side and it can rotate. It's interesting because they have a very uh, small eye spot called stigma and uh, they can um, not, uh, not exactly look uh, like uh, us with our eyes, but the uh, animal can, uh, for example, uh, know if it is dark or it is light. Also, uh, the flagellum has an uh, inner body, which is called pyroflagellal body, which uh, is supporting the movement of the flagellum. Also, uh, it has a contractile vacuole with which the animal extracts uh, the uh, products from digestion or uh, unnecessary uh, products uh, from the photosynthesis because it has chloroplasts. As I said in the previous lecture, chloroplasts are uh, typical for plants, but here there is an animal which uh, uses the photosynthesis. It can feed passively from the sunlight. Also, there are polysaccharides stored by uh, photosynthesis inside the body, something like the hump of the camel. It uh, can be stored uh, in uh, the body of the animal and it can feed when there is uh, no any light. And of course, uh, the nucleus, uh, that's why we uh, classify this animal from the single cell organism kingdom. And one of the representatives, uh, 
the so-called Euglena viridis. Here is uh, not well visible. I'm sorry for this. Uh, Euglena viridis or viridis in Latin means green. It means green Euglena. It is uh, one of the uh, widely distributed species, at least in Europe. And uh, it is uh, often used as an example of a species from the genus Euglena in the books of zoology. Green because it has chloroplasts. Here is the link for an interesting uh, short uh, clip in YouTube about Euglena moves. A representative uh, of the flagellatus, but the colonial ones. These are living in colonias. This is not a single organism. This is a colony of specimens, of single individuals, which are connected to each other. These uh, are species from the order Volvocida and genus Volvox, and um, one of the widely distributed species, Volvox aureus. Here, very interesting and light microscope um, photograph of this colonial. Uh, species. Uh, one, uh, some scientists uh, uh, consider the Volvox uh, as a transitional form uh, between the single-celled organisms and uh, the uh, multi-celled organisms. Subphylum so, Rhizopoda, a phylum of single-celled animals which includes the amoebas and their relatives, which have extensible pseudopodia. Uh, what is pseudopodia? Uh, this in Latin means uh, false legs. Pseudos, false, uh, podia, legs. Or from Greek, podus, I'm sorry. Modern Latin, plural. Some call them rhizopods, or from root. And the order amebida, or naked amoebas. Uh, one of the mm, Familiar species is Amoeba proteus. Uh, what is characteristic for these animals? Uh, the, this is uh, that they uh, don't have a particular shape. They have pseudopodia. Uh, these are um, temporary structures of the um, membrane in the, in the cell with which uh, the animals are crawling on the substrate. Um, they are living in uh, water, in fresh waters, especially Amoeba proteus. And uh, also, with their pseudopodias, they are catching prey. So, uh, they can feed on very small organisms, like bacteria, but they can feed in, uh, uh, on uh, organisms which are uh, uh, about their size. Uh, for, for example, the Paramecium caudatum, a species which we'll talk uh, in the next lectures. Um, and uh, what uh, is the amoeba doing? It is approaching its prey and it is surrounding it by uh, the pseudopodias. Uh, and in a particular moment there is a bubble, uh, because these pseudopodia are connecting, and there is a bubble inside the cytoplasm of the amoeba with uh, its prey. Uh, a lot of uh, digestive enzymes are uh, secreted inside of this bubble and it is called uh, Feeding, uh, feeding vacuole. Uh, the animal, the prey, is uh, digested and uh, the uh, unnecessary stuff, uh, the products from the digestion, are excreted by contractile vacuole. It is shown on this uh, picture. This is a light microscopic uh, Photograph of uh, this the same uh, species and never. This is a short movie. You can watch how it is feeding on Paramecium caudatum in YouTube. And there are species uh, from the amoebas uh, which are uh, also and parasitic. This is the so-called Entamoeba histolytica, which invades the human guts. It can invade the human body through polluted waters, especially in the tropical areas, it's a common case. It can enter through the mouth and live in the uh, intestinal tract. There are the animals feeding on our, our uh, symbiotic microphora. And it is very dangerous species here on him is the uh, cycle of, of uh, this uh, species. Dangerous again, uh, which is causing 
um, the so-called dysentery. Other <coughs> species from the amoebas uh, has uh, external skeletal structures, so they have something like a shell. The most simple are these from the order Testacea. Uh, Testacea is an order of rhizopods which consists of testata and amoeboid organisms. The, here are the examples of the Arcella vulgaris. The Arcellas have uh, uh, this uh, type of shell with one um, opening uh, from which the uh, pseudopodias are going out and the animal contacts the other world with these. The other, the Euglypha, Filifera, and the Fugio oblonga has these uh, pear-shaped um, houses <laughs> and they <coughs> can uh, also extend their uh, pseudopodias from one big opening uh, which is uh, at the top of this pear and uh, there are some pores in the shell uh, from which also the animal contacts with the outer world. Here is a slight microscopic picture of the Arcella vulgaris and uh, the pseudopodias. The opening is called pseudostom. Also, the, uh, the nucleus are shown. This is a light microscope picture of the Fulgio oblonga, uh, which uh, also uh, shell is uh, overgrown by algae. This green color is from algae, not from the Diflugia. Order Foraminifera. These are very complex, complicatedly uh, shelled amoebas. The Foraminiferas. They are living in salt waters in comparison with the previous species, which are living in fresh waters. Foraminiferas living in uh, salt waters, the seas and oceans of the world, and they used to live there from uh, millions of years. So these species, together with the next order, or um, which I will. Uh, show you with the radiovarias, they uh, shaped our relief, our geography of the of some parts of the world because uh, when they die, they were a lot so and they are living um, in open ocean or in the bottom of the oceans. But when they died, their shells are falling down and they were so many, so many that uh, when fossilized, they uh, made the limestone rocks which have a biogenic uh, origin and they formed the rocks some some uh, limestone rocks formations uh, on earth when these uh, ocean bottoms became land in some of the geological times basically the foraminiferas uh, have uh, this uh, snail like uh, shell but it is uh, divided into chambers uh, which are called septs. They also have on, on the surface some pores with which also the animal can contact with the outer uh, environment. This is a cut uh, of the shell of a foraminifera. You can see the so-called septs or chambers inside the animal. So uh, they are also connected and the whole animal is situated inside. Order Radiolaria. These are the most uh, complicatedly uh, uh, structured uh, uh, mebus which have uh, these skeletal structures. They are not uh, like the small houses, roughly said, of the previous uh, organisms. They have something like a skeletal structure. It can uh, also um, uh, serve as uh, for defending. You can see these spicules, these spines. Uh, and these are one of the, uh, the, the be very beautiful uh, representatives of the uh, invertebrate. These are other examples of uh, skeletal structure of the uh, radiolarias. You can imagine the soft body of the amoeba-like uh, creature which is uh, situated in this structure. Filum sporozoa or apicomplexa. This is other film. We are beginning with apicomplexa. This, uh, this is consisted only of parasitic uh, species and they are cell parasites. You, can, uh, you have to remember that they are cell parasites. And they have this complex structure 
uh, at the um, their apex at, at their end of the cell, uh, and, and the, that's why they are called apicomplex. It is consisted by a poro link, conoid, pellicle, subpellicular tubule, micronym, rock tree. There is also uh, the typical of, uh, of the single cell uh, organelles, like the Golgi body, the nucleus, nucleolus inside the nucleus, the mitochondria, and it has uh, a posterior ring of the other edge of the body. Also, it has a micropore. Class Hematozoea, blood parasites. And the example is the species Plasmodium malariae. There are uh, not only one species which is causing malaria, but this is one uh, of, the, of the species which is widely distributed in, uh, in um, many causes this, but there are uh, more than five species in the tropical areas of plasmodiums which can cause the symptoms of malaria. This is uh, uh, cell parasite which is transmitted by uh, uh, mosquitoes. You know that they are sucking blood, and uh, uh, with uh, these uh, mosquitoes, the uh, parasite plasmodiums are transmitted uh, into the the body of the host. And uh, sometimes, for example, for uh, it's not uh, uh, curable uh, if. Uh, measures are not taken on time so uh, it uh, you, you someone have to be very cautious and go in tropical areas uh, to to use uh, repellents but it is not a tropical disease for example in europe in previous times there was a lot of malaria class coccidia many parasites in the epithelium cells of the intestine of vertebrates the species Aemeria magna, parasite in the epithelium cells in the intestine of rabbits. Example uh, for uh, future veterinarians. Aemeria tenella, parasite in the intestine of hens. Here is the cycle of this parasite. As I said, you detailly will study these parasites in the course of. Uh, during lectures of uh, parasitology. Here, for zoology, you don't have to remember this cycle, but you have to know that this parasite has a cycle of development. Toxoplasma gondi. This is a parasite on cats, but uh, is transmitted by uh, rodents, for example, mice. Toxoplasma gondi causing the disease toxoplasmosis. Here is a short movie about this toxoplasmosis. Uh, 